All right, so ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we now get started with our next panel discussion, and our panelists are here already. So I'm going to quickly invite Mr. Anush Puri to please come on the stage. Warm welcome, sir. I believe the first round of discussion already took place outside, so we'll get started here as well. Well, joining him on the stage, I'd now like to invite Mr. Jayesh Karya, Chartered Accountant and Real Estate Consultant, to please come on the stage as well. In fact, uh, he comes with over 25 years of professional uh, experience with uh, big four consulting firms in India, and he's also heading the real estate and construction practice at KPMG uh, for about four years. Our next speaker, Solicitor Parimal Shroff, founder and solicitor Parimal K. Shroff & Co., in fact, uh, is in the practice since 1975 and has the experience in land acquisition and requisition and related matters as well. Well, moving on to our next speaker, we have with us the CEO and Managing Director, ASK Property Investment Advisors. May I please invite Mr. Amit Bhagat as well on the stage. He comes with uh, uh, over two decades of experience in the financial services, mainly in the mortgage and real estate business. Moving on to our next speaker, the CEO, Grandview, Shapoji Palonji Real Estate. May I please invite Mr. Dipesh Salgia as well to please come on the stages and the stage. And he comes with over 25 years of versatile work experience across real estate, consultancy, as well as experience including in land acquisition, JV structuring, uh, design and architecture of projects as well. Well, moving on, the marathon list of panelists continue because up next we have with us the Managing Director, Commercial Real Estate and REIT. We have with us Mr. Vinod K. Rohira. And if I may please invite him on the stage as well. And he's also been equipped with an MBA from Booth School of Business, Chicago, and a law degree from Mumbai University, and has played a vital part in the company's initial move towards retail development. Moving on to our uh, final speaker, we have with us Mr. Manish Borwal, uh, Mr. Manish Borwal, my apologies, who's the Managing Director of Alchemist Marketing Solutions, who comes with more than 22 years of experience in media and marketing services across the national markets. Okay, there we go. We are done with the round of introductions, so we know what up next is to get some energy from the audience. We just had a dose of caffeine, so can we have some warm round of applause to welcome our second set of panel members. And let's find out the experiences and influences concerning RERA. So with that, I'm going to request our session moderator, uh, Mr. Anuj Puri, to take it over from here. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's a delight to be here uh, this uh, evening. Um, thank you to Reality Plus for organizing this uh, phenomenal panel. Uh, I'm genuinely excited to uh, moderate this panel because we could not had, have had more eclectic uh, panelists uh, from uh, various uh, industries, uh, including uh, legal fraternity. And uh, you know, uh, we haven't uh, seen uh, Mr. Parimal Shroff uh, come often on the panel, so I'm sure there is a lot that all of us have to ask. Uh, you know, Mr. Shroff, uh, we've got. Uh, on the tax and the consulting side, uh, Jayesh, uh, we've had uh, Amit on the private equity side, uh, Vinod on representing the developers um, in there, and likewise uh, Dipesh uh, and, uh, and Manish on the marketing side. Uh, so it'll be interesting to hear uh, the developers' views, the legal fraternity view, the uh, consultants' uh, view, and uh, the private equity uh, views. Uh, the first one, um, Vinod, I really wanted to start with you. Uh, I had two questions, and uh, you know, these are interesting questions. Uh, I'm not getting into the depth of the RERA as yet, but just at 30,000 feet, I want to start, and then Paramal Bhai, I probably will go into, into, into the bottom of this. Is. Tell me, um, Vinod, that how will RERA change the perception of Indian real estate amongst the global investors, you know, given that uh, you, know, you are now hopefully looking to do a REIT. I know you've done a big private equity transaction with Blackstone. Um, I mean, it's the world's largest uh, real estate private equity, uh, and you now have them as your partner. How, how do you believe that RERA is going to change this perception with the global investors? I think it's certainly going to help because uh, in most cases, the risk premium attached to buying properties or investing into properties on the Excel has gone away. So you've not seen residential investments happen from international players in the last three, four years. They've probably forgotten about residential investment. Can you hear him at the back? Not audible. Uh, so so I get a little louder. Can you hear me? So they've forgotten residential real estate in the last few years. Having investors. said that, investors, uh, uh, the pr international investors. So having said that, with RERA, and if you have a structured approach and you have a product and a land site which is compliant and you're willing to list it out and you're working in that 
mechanism, you will certainly get interest generated because you'll have a lot of the risks, perceived risks go down and you'll be more conducive to making that investment. Having said that, it's still very, very early days and we have to see how RERA really pans out in its spirit and content to see how it can get implemented for the best interest of all. Do you think it will infuse the much required confidence in the buyers? So the buyers, unfortunately, don't really know anything beyond of the fact that yes, RERA is a legislation which is going to look after their interests. It could go the other end of the spectrum completely because there are situations, if you look at RERA in other countries, similar to that. It's become a litigant society because of the act, the way it works out in China, for example. And you have, even if a handle breaks out, you have a complaint filed and then you have a case registered. So we're hoping that doesn't happen to an environment in India because it will create chaos. Having said that, it's a fantastic legislation for the consumer and I think they'll only benefit out of this. Amit, uh, you've largely been uh, giving debt to the developers, uh, mezzanine or however you may qualify, but it is, it is debt. Do you think uh, with data coming in, you'll start to bring in equity into the residential real estate market? No, I just, I'll just like to clarify one thing. We have been only doing equity. And actually, that, that is why there are projects where we have made 18 and 55%. So uh, neither uh, in any debt case, nobody will give me a 55% and, uh, you know, I cannot fall to 70. But, but there is no uh, it's a protection that you so It's take. a complete pari passu returns with risk taken at the land buying yeah, stage. No, and so we have done almost 24 projects so far. We were very clear right from the beginning and we were actually following a format of RERA. Buy land, don't leverage, put all money in escrow and utilize it for construction. And when you want exit, then there are enough people to give money on the project. So if I, if I go back and look at the implementation of the RERA in all our projects in five states, I don't see it impacting any of my projects today. <laughs> right. So uh, I think it's a, it's a win-win situation every month we come across one international investor and we have raised money only from domestic market so far. Every month we come across one international investor who says, because of this regulation, I am now willing to look at, oh, wow. again, at residential markets. Pure equity. Pure equity. I mean, I'm going to ask you a little tricky question. Uh, I don't know how many developers are there in this room. If there are 100 developers, how many you think are going to survive the next 18 months because of RERA? I think uh, 20 or 30. My God. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, that is a big statement. 70, 80 developers in the next percent in the next 18 months will perish. I'm not saying perish. They, they may not be interested in continuing with this business because... That's a polite way of perish. <laughs> purely because uh, that Rob Peter to pay Paul is gone and uh, you have to now invest equity in buying of land and provide some working capital because RERA will not allow you to take money from day one till you have spent so I think the business model has to change uh, well capitalized, deep pocketed players will start entering into this business. Brand building is not very easy, but people, very credible players will be able to sell. The only silver lining is the customer is feeling empowered because of the legislation, so he, he may come back at the right price point. We know the one, uh, one question to you and then I'm going to <laughs> move uh, Parimal Bhai to, you, to your side. Um, are you getting a lot of... Uh, propositions from developers to come in and do joint venture, joint development, management contract of their existing land parcels? There is definitely movement in terms of proposals that are coming on the table. And I think it's only going to increase in the next three months to six months because uh, I think by early next year, first quarter next year to second quarter, you will know the real impact of RERA and the consequences of that on projects that might want infusion of equity or takeover or repositioning product to actually bring it back to market because if commitments are made, you're halfway through a project, 
you have no option but, but to pour concrete whether you get sales or not. If you don't, you got to switch off, unwind and exit. So I don't think there's a waiting game anymore if you have already started selling a project and most projects have sold speculatively without approval. So that's a big gap which needs to get filled up. Even uh, Anuj, if you see the pre-RERA kind of thing, uh, we have seen kind of before demonetization or after demonetization, the consolidation has already started. I think the heat has already kind of uh, is there in the market and people have started realizing that this is not the kind of, I would say, the era of 1980s or 1990s. But I think the complete, there is a complete sea change in the whole way the business needs to be done. And therefore, just coming back to your point that how many will survive, uh, so he nicely said, but I, I'm going to see uh, there is going to be a huge consolidation that's going to happen. So maybe that, I think, will, I think, reduce the number of, I would say, the players. And that will bring in the kind of the quality players and the committed players. Then the kind of what the contractors became in saying that, okay, fine, I'm a developer. So I think all those things will disappear. Yeah, and that, and that is going to be a good for the industry. Overall. Yeah, and, and just uh, what Amit said is that he felt is that the consolidation will be to the tune of 70-80% of the developers will disappear or get consolidated in some form. Right, uh, absolutely. Whether it is those joint ventures, developers, right, as Vinod absolutely. said. So your thought is similar that oh, there is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, guys, a lot of guys who are there on the floor, <laughs> you know, you, you need to be careful which, which, with which developers are you employed. One, and second is, you know, which of your vendors you would get finally paid uh, by, those, uh, by those developers. You know, you and the fraternity as well will have to be sort of careful uh, on, on, on that because, you know, it is an interesting analysis and that is, that is what the truth is. Nobody is dramatizing it, but that is what the truth is that 70-80% um, of, the, of the fraternity on the real estate development side will get consolidated. Uh, Perhaps that needed to happen for the industry to move forward, for the industry to mature, for the next cycle uh, to come in, that some of the uh, perhaps not well-capitalized, as you said, equity uh, developers who did not have the ability to buy land through equity uh, perhaps need to get uh, consolidated. Paramal, by a barge of questions to you and Jesh, uh, the first one that I have is, what do you feel are the key challenges in successful implementation of RERA on ground? First and foremost is Maharashtra has uh, secured a lot of ground at this point of time by having a Maharera authority, which is uh, pragmatic, which is matured, and I believe is, uh, is very friendly for the purpose of implementation of law. It is not looking at the letter of the law for the purpose of, uh, uh, you know, beating uh, the industry. It is trying to be pragmatic, the manner in which the late comers who are coming for registering the ongoing project shows that Maharera is conducive to change, but is also very understanding, number one. Number two, that the changes which are coming, to get them absorbed, we, I believe, require a more awareness, the number of projects which have been registered. And uh, in Maharashtra, though we are very impressed by the number which have been registered, but it looks like the real estate agents are more registered and they are more conscious of getting the license to practice. But the builders have not come out in the, in the, in the number that they should have come up to. And uh, new projects, how they are getting registered, will have to be seen because that is required. The new launches are necessary. Because whatever registration we are looking at is of ongoing project. Correct. And ongoing projects at various stages they are. So that is not a barometer of where the industry is. And we require something because whether you talk of investment, whether you talk of the mutual funds coming in, whether you talk of the foreign funds, they are all looking at the big ticket transactions in which say DLF, they are going to invest in where there is already a leased properties in which the rentals are the supposed to be the uh, the, 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 the package they are looking at is a return. And that's like a REITs kind of a business. It is not actually helping the real estate industry for the new projects and they are not investing in the off then bringing more projects off the ground. And RERA, we are all trying to get used to and I believe that the industry is trying to absorb the effect of RERA. And you require a RERA compliance consciousness and RERA compliance mindset for the purpose of working. Every developer will require in his office, if he has got more than one project, 
a real estate at the rara compliance officer who will have to guide him every morning because there are so many things to be done if you are not going to really comply with it you will get into a unnecessary and avoidable problems which you can probably deal with comfortably so rara to my mind was much awaited very necessary pan india requirement you can't compare rest of india with maharashtra you are something else you are highly qualified you are highly organized you are highly transparent compared to rest of india wow maharashtra I, maharashtra is very nice. you i must tell you that i have experience of dealing in karnataka in tamil nadu and noida and and gurgaon is is another world is another <laughs> orbit altogether because uh, one day you go you don't find the developer the next time you go you can't don't find your project also <laughs> so i believe that this is going to bring about a lot of change i would say that sea change it is going to bring about and long term result of rara is going to be good and this was much required and i believe that it's going to bring a lot of discipline to this industry which is necessary two more questions uh, just, just one to add the statistics kind of thing in fact uh, uh, we had invited gautam bhai gautam charji over here but unfortunately he couldn't make it because of the durga puja Uh, but in terms of the statistics, just to give you total, almost about thirteen thousand eight hundred projects have been registered by the developers, and out of that, almost about four hundred and fifty to five hundred are the new projects. Rest are all existing projects, which is about ninety-five percent. That's what the Maharashtra claims. Ninety-five percent of projects have been registered, and almost about ten thousand uh, channel partners or the brokers, whatever you call, have registered. And so that's a kind of a, a good news and. Uh, the authorities are also i would say very positive as sir you rightly mentioned very pragmatic and happy to kind of resolve the problem and not to kind of create any i would say issues or the challenges for the sector if the developers are really willing to kind of go one step forward very nice um on the ongoing projects pranay what is going to happen because there has been delays that have happened uh and then 70% of the money is not really in the escrow account how is the regulator going to deal with the delays and the 70% of the money not being in an escrow account anuj ji the my personal view is that abhi to shuru hua hai ongoing project ka jo khel hai usme the real the maharashtra authority is going to be bogged down because there is very little i would say meat into the matter or teeth into the law which can make ongoing projects suddenly turn its Uh, trend the reason being incomplete project languishing for several years with money not being there and dried out stakeholders are diffident the banks are not willing to come forward rara can do very very little it can punish the promoter it can take over the project but let me tell you we have seen how asset reconstruction companies have been promising one after yeah. the other that we are going to really revive the companies take over sell off the assets but asset reconstruction companies have not brought about any change pink pages are every day full of pages of government trying to understand as to how to really take over this uh, sick industries and their assets same thing is there with the i would say that ongoing projects rera will to some extent help it will bring the the woes of the people in the forefront Maharashtra authority has a power to examine adjudicate punish direct payment of amounts non payment will bring about execution of orders but we as as the one of the panelists right now said that it will become a, are we a litigious society which is going to go into some sort of a, a litigation drive anyway the civil courts are full of it so instead of that now with the new authority coming into picture which will be rare as a judicious judicial powers and the cases will come up there but that is not going to make the ongoing projects get completed easily only awareness is created right. and maharashtra authority will intervene but it cannot really deliver and there i believe that the to expect something more than that from the maharashtra authority will be expecting too much and that's a very good point uh, pranil bhai because uh, the consumer thought is that now rera has come i will get my project i believe that is a, a slightly misplaced uh, expectation and uh, there is a surely surely the promoters are uh, afraid about the consequences they are thinking they are answerable to somebody and more than anything there is a time element which has been introduced by rera which is on one hand it's a very good thing 
and I believe that uh, Maharera authority is also conscious and I believe conscientious and it is trying to dispose of as fast as possible and uh, more and more complaints are getting registered which is bound to happen. Yes. With, because the registration, the, the skewed uh, registration profile which has been given by my friend Mr. Jayesh is saying that there are hardly a couple of hundred new projects have been registered but they are all old projects which have come that was expected before 1st of August. So I believe the, uh, the, the, there, is, there is a hope that this is going to bring about some positive result and it should really work towards a satisfying the complaints of the people who have been waiting for their projects to get completed. Uh, just to yes. add uh, in terms of the statistics today, in fact as of now, as of yesterday, I think almost about 400 plus complaints have already been filed uh, by wow. different uh, consumers for whatever reasons uh, and uh, almost daily the panel, the panel of three members at Maharera have been hearing, having six to seven hearings per day. So that's almost about 20 to 25 hearings are taking place and uh, we have seen that uh, the hearing does not drag along for months together or years together. In the third session, either developer consensus and then the matter gets resolved. So it's as fast as it could Which be kind of, yeah, in the civil court. <laughs> and in fact, Vinod well, just uh, saying is that there are 100,000 cases of property matters pending in the civil court. Uh, whilst we're doing very well here, but you know, the old pending cases, Perhaps they will move in here. Some of them will move in here. Yeah, uh, but, but uh, maybe Parimal Bhai can kind of uh, throw some light on it. I think the challenge, uh, sir, the, the mostly is are all existing projects. And there we have kind of two regulations which are dealing with. One is a MOFA where the agreement's already been entered into and the apartments have already been sold. And from 1st May 2017, the agreement has to be in terms of RERA. So there are situations where whether the MOFA will kind of will prevail or where ERA will prevail and I think the regulators are also trying to figure out that how to kind of uh, expedite this judicious process and also manage both MOFA versus RERA and ensure that the kind of resolution yeah. is being uh, brought to the table. Kind of. So that's again a dichotomy where the regulators themselves are facing and trying to see how that can be resolved from a legal standpoint. Jisha, the question that I had for you was, uh, Many of these states in Panula, you said the right thing that Maharera has probably been the best that has been done and ideal. ideal. And many of these states have now subsequently diluted that. My question, Jesh, to you and then Parimal Bhai to you as a subset of that. Uh, the first is, um, can the central government do anything to stop this dilution of the RERA model code that was produced by the center and very well adopted by Maharashtra? Uh, see, uh, from a legal standpoint, obviously, Parimalwai is the best person to talk about it. But as far as the uh, construct of the Central Act is concerned, there is no way the state has been kind of given a power to implement, frame the rules and implement. But there is no way that the state can dilute. For an example, that the state cannot come back by way of a rule to say that the existing projects are not subjected to RERA because Section 3 of the Central Act clearly says that all existing projects where the completion certificate, whether it is an OC or the completion certificate depending on the state, is not obtained, needs to be registered with their era authorities in their respective state. But there's state. been a huge dilution on that, Jesh. Yeah, but, but if you see the Gujarat, the original draft, there was a kind of a, yeah. a clear-cut mention that the existing project need not be registered. But if you look at the final uh, regulations, it's clear covers the existing, except that some of the areas which are kind of outside the municipal limits are outside the RERA. But the way that they have defined the existing is anyone who has applied for OC before yeah. RERA came in. I mean, I know of buildings which are half complete and they've applied for OC. And right. they're saying we're outside RERA because we've applied for OC. Uh, see, that also again is not going to work. And even I would say the, when the Maharera authority issued some of the clarifications, the orders, there is a dilution to an extent. Like I'll give an example that uh, what the Maharera has said, that while computing the 70%, uh, the cost of the land should not be the cost of the land as it is there in the books of account or what is being paid when it was being purchased. But you can take the kind of what you call the ASR values of 142001 similar to like to income tax act and on top of it the clarifications provided that you can do the indexation also similar to like income tax act and then take the value of the land at a kind of a current uh, value plus the indexation and then that becomes a cost of the project and therefore that enables the developer, 
yes it is good for the industry so that the developer is able to kind of a, re receive the money or withdraw the money out of 70% and put it back into the project but the point is that yes there is a dilution because which is not which is being provided in the central act and the central act never talked about this so therefore uh, possibly there could be a, a litigation or there could be a PIL that could be filed on that front to say that there is a dilution which allows the developer to take away more money out of this whole process. Parimal, my, my, uh, and you can add on to this, but uh, the question uh, that I wanted to ask is, would there not be PILs? I mean, if I was sure. a consumer in, in Karnataka or, or Uttar Pradesh or, or Haryana and, you know, there have been severe dilution of the acts, I mean, I would do I'm surprised that why there are no petitions yes. which have been filed by now. And I'm sure that they will come up and uh, the, this is the law which permits even representative PILs can be filed and it can be filed on behalf of the groups and NGOs can come about. Uh, I believe the UP, partly Gujarat and Rajasthan rules have been uh, diluting the law very, very uh, substantially. The government of India has taken note of it and they have said that they will try to get it regularized and they will try to standardize these rules and wherever there is such dilution that will not be tolerated is a, some sort of a policy, policy statement with the spokesperson has spoken on behalf of the government of India. And I believe that this dilution will not be possible. Twenty-five states have come up with the notifications by yeah. now. And uh, I, I, I'm more than certain that these dilutions will not work because it is not only in respect of ongoing project. There have been in so many ways that it has been tweaked that that will not be possible because it will have to remain faithful to the act. And the basic principle which is going to be take home for you that you cannot have rules which are contrary to the act. So it's supposed to be umbrella law and in which if you make rules, it will have to be faithful to the act and it cannot really go contrary to yes. what we call in law ultra virus the act because that will not survive and it will surely be struck down by the courts on challenge. And I'm more than certain that it will happen over a period of time because this law is first of May 2017, it came pan India and uh, in a state like us with first of August that the rules and really effective Mahar era has come into play. So in another few months that we'll be able to see the results. Manish, I want to change gears and uh, want to move into the marketing and, you know, invariably we've seen a very fancy picture put up, uh, you know, a very smart looking boy and a girl uh, in that picture. Uh, so if you want to understand with Rera coming in, uh, you know, would the developer need to give the boy and the girl as well uh, that are there in the picture? Well, uh, let me warn you and let me warn everybody else that uh, my views are likely to not just be unique but also heterogeneous to the rest of the group in this case uh, because of probably the, the, the industry interface that we go through. But let me tell you the three things that I would feel will happen. First, before I tell you all those three things, I would like to relate RERA with GST. But GST, not the way you know it. Give some time. <laughs> things are going to change quite a bit and you're going to see that happen and unfold in front of you. So the first thing that is going to happen, I believe, is exactly the opposite probably and I'm I'm, I'm seeking pardon said, from what Amit said actually. What Amit said. Uh, uh, Jay said consolidation, which I agree. But Amit said that 80% people will wipe out and I saw some real discomforted faces out there. Uh, my, my little submission is exactly the opposite. 20% will phase out. But you know what will happen? The 80% who remain or 70%, let's not argue about the number, will all first again get an equal chance. And let me explain why. Sorry, first again? First again get an equal chance. So while there was a very clear discrimination between the top end um, uh, developers and the others who also ran, it will start all over again. And let me explain how it will start all over again. What's happening is that the duty of identifying whether a project is good, bad, ugly will move from the consumer back to the regulatory because the regulatory job has already been done. Therefore, the consumer is no longer in that patch zone, which is price, amenity and trust. Because he was supposed to identify all of the trust himself. Now it doesn't happen. So like many other industries, and I'm sorry for comparing, but many other industries like tobacco or liquor, where self-regulation has taken over. When self-regulation takes over, then the consumer gets more relaxed and is ready to give more chance to people who are newer. So what's going to happen is that newer guys are going to get again chance to deliver and to win a trust. So that's one, one big thing that is going to happen. So I don't believe everybody will go down. It's like a CA versus MBA exam. You know, when you're trying to apply for a CA exam, what happens is anybody, whoever wants, can apply. That's all right. This was the state earlier. 
but an MBA is just the two different things. It's very difficult to get through in the entrance exam, but once you get through, you have to be really horrible to not get through becoming an MBA. So it's becoming an MBA exam now. So that's the one big change that is happening. The second big change that will happen is with self-regulation, newer ways of proliferation will happen. So a lot of real estate guys who today talk only price, only trust, only amenities, will move on to newer ways of finding how to talk about themselves. So let me give you an odd example of FMCGs. Nobody confuses Dove with Lux, right? Love is, uh, Lux is, Lux is, uh, sorry for that, Lux is Filmi Sitaro Ko Sundari Saban, and Dove is all about trying it yourself and figuring out, right? Very distinct brands. You're going to have distinct brands as Rera becomes more and more important. They're not going to be brands where the advertising is same, all you have to replace is the logo. That's not going to happen. That's a big change that's, that's expected. And self-regulation will bring in huge amount of money here. Currently, the number of people who ever think of getting into real estate is so small. With vis-a-vis -vis mobiles, vis-a-vis -vis any other big industry. The moment people know that the money is secure, or at least partly secure, a lot of people who never wanted to get, I think somebody said this also, are, are just waiting there to invest in real estate. The moment they say that, okay, somebody is looking after my interest, I don't have to, they're going to get it. It will boost the confidence. Absolutely boost the confidence. So I'm pretty sure in a horizon of about a year to about 36 months, we are going to see a very different landscape. We are going to see growth. And we, in particular, as um, he also said, that in Maharashtra in particular, there is so much of transparency already vis-a-vis -vis all other states. I mean, I come from Rajasthan, I can tell you that yes, forget the project not being there, even the land may not be there for all you know. <laughs> That, that is going to change quite a bit. So yes, marketing world is going to change completely. So Manish, I want to take you back to the first point where you said is that uh, you, you may have a tangential view to Amit. Yeah. Uh, and you know, what, what, and for the purpose of clarity, I'll just repeat is that Amit said is that he felt that 70 to 80% of the developers over the next 18 months would extinct. So, so your views, you said, are different to this, is it? Exactly opposite to that, sorry, but... See, the good part about marketing is newer ways of marketing are evolving. Imagine five years ago, could you sell real estate on digital? You couldn't. Today you can target, if you have an eight story, 64 flat project in Kandivali, you can decide to target only Kandivali West people who are looking forward to a two bedroom home which has three bathrooms, specifically looking for it and you can talk only to them and not waste your money. And therefore, the, the guy who doesn't have that much money as the top guys do, has equal chance. And that was never there earlier. So what's happening is RERA is not alone. RERA is in conjunction with the environmental changes that are happening in advertising and marketing world. And that's going to change quite a bit. So those of you who are sitting out here who are still, and I must tell you, I, I feel sorry saying this, but I've worked in real estate now enough to call myself also a real estate guy. But I must tell you that you guys have seen no marketing at all. You guys have seen sales and sales promotions. Marketing is yet to come to real estate. Brands are yet to be made which outlive projects. Right now, brands are only about projects, isn't it? Largely. Very few brands are created beyond projects. And even if they are brands, they are the, they are the corporate brands. They are the Lodas and the Godrejes. They are not Platina as a brand, which becomes signatory to what Platina will always stand for. But Raheja Whatever is, is a brand today. Sorry? Raheja is a brand. Yes, but it's a corporate brand. So you expect something of Raheja, but Raheja doesn't have five different brands which stands for five different promises and therefore there's no proliferation. Raheja stands for Raheja, whatever it be, whether it be trust, whether it be I've been there for many years, whether it be I've given you things on time, whatever it be. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Nayan Bhai says that I've always given projects on time and that's his qualification to where he is, right? He's, he's always said that, right? Now, there will be brands which will fight and compete in that space of timely possession. There will be brands which will fight in the space of fantastic construction quality and so on and so forth. So we haven't seen any proliferation at right. all so far. Understood. Now we will see. And now we will see aided by RERA but not only in the environment of RERA. RERA is, a, is an important but not the only part which is changing everything. Digital world is changing. Newspapers are losing somewhere that, that entire thing of what they used to command. Response advertising, people are moving away from now. They understand that they have to build brands. Amit is building a brand right now. He's going to speak to you in a few minutes from now. And, and he's building a brand beyond being a, sorry, but beyond just being a broker. 
he is building that. I can see that. I'm, I'm his agency. So I know it works. So there's a lot of change expected and it's all beautiful change. Trust me, stay there. Tell your, uh, if you are employed with any of the developers, tell them the story and, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are glad to help you um, get away from this stumbling block called the RERA implementation. Dipesh, uh, you come from uh, one of the most uh, respected, uh, you know, developers, the Shapuji Palunji real estate uh, group. Uh, for you, RERA must be music because it really weeds out some of the fly-by-night operators uh, with whom, you know, it was becoming difficult for you to compete because the poor consumer was not able to really differentiate Shapurji versus a uh, lesser known, perhaps even unethical uh, brand and was getting lured towards that whilst you in a position of knowledge and visibility knew that the consumer was being, you know, taken for a ride. Uh, but really had an inability to advise the consumer. So today you must be feeling a lot more lighter, a lot more vindicated uh, in the sense to say is that this is the time when I can actually show the power of a brand like Shapurji Palunji. Okay, I'll just start with from when you started earlier, that looking at 30,000 feet from the ground, what happens, then I'll come to your question. Uh, see, basically, if you see what has Rera done, today the real estate market is exactly or the same position was what stock market was in early 90s. Just imagine in those days if you have invested absolutely untransparent market, you had so many stock brokers, every Gali Chukka you will have some stock broker. There was no, uh, you could charge 1% brokerage, 2% brokerage, 3% brokerage. Delivery would happen after 14 days, 17 days, 20 days. Bad delivery was very common. Practically same as real estate. Just exactly one-to-one -one comparison, you see. What happened in the early 90s? SEBI came. In early, some early avatar, then SEBI came, then NEC came. Market became transparent, more, more transparent. Brokerages came down, and then delivery was T plus 7, then T plus 5, then T plus 3, 2 plus 2, and all that. So there was a guideline for delivery. Everything came in fine. The same thing exactly is going to happen in the real estate market. The only difference being, now this is very important here. SEBI made changes of what is called uh, uh, DMAT trading and delivery in time over 12 to 15 or 20 years, a much longer time. RERA has done it in short span. So in that, during those days, the broker had time to react to it and put the systems in place over a period of time. Today, the time is shortened. So what you have seen in stock market in, in 25 years, you will see next five years in real estate. So yes, in a way, I agree with him that there will be a lot of people coming out, as you have seen in real estate, in stockbroking. A lot of, for a lot of people, stockbroking is no more viable because the cost of regulation or margins have come down, whatever. Now, our numbers will be 80%, 20%. We can always argue that's only a stochastic projection. But what I'm trying to say is that the actual number of developers will come down because it's not going to be viable for various reasons. The second reason why it's not going to be viable for people is because what has ERA done fundamentally it has transformed the entire risk to developer. Delivery late, developer pays. Five-year contingency, developer pays. Uh, approval's risk, developer. He can't pass the risk to developer approval. So all the risks have come to developer. Now, if I apply a simple finance theory, what happens is that if the risk of a business increases, the corresponding return on the business has to increase. But I'm sure all of you agree, the return is not increased. So if in a business, at a, at a 30,000 feet level, you see that the risk has increased, but the corresponding return is not increased. What's going to happen? People are going to go out. Not for regulation reason, but because financial reasons. It's not going to be viable because the returns are not so high as it was earlier. And your risk has increased. Actual risk has increased in a way because your legal risk is much higher today. The risk for the buyer is less, but for the developer is more. So I see not only for legal reason, but other reasons also people actually start coming out. So now coming to your question, what happens to people like Shapuji or Rahaj who are developers? The way the advantage to them is that they can leverage the balance sheet and raise much more debt than what they could earlier. Now because the perception, risk perception of this business has come down. Mm -hmm. So you have much more kind of different kind of funds that are coming up other than pure debt fund or whatever kind of funds that will come up. I don't know what kind of funds will come up, but a lot of debt funds will come up. The challenge for developer would be to raise equity funds because there aren't too many equity funds to, to justify the risk levels. I think that's the thing we'll have to discover going forward. Now for the consumers, as you're saying, what's going to happen or from the marketers, we have to again look at what stockbrokers looked. 
in the past in 90s or 80s you had only few marwadi or gujarati people investing in stock market just imagine ask a stock broker in 80s who would invest you would buy some vepari in uh, kapla market or some other uh, some some other stock broker or some uh, businessman who would invest in stock market in 25 years what has happened again it's gone to it is the market is widened whether through mutual fund or other or through uh, ins- insurance uh, products or otherwise the investment in stock market has gone is distributed significantly now that's what won't happen in real estate we have to widen the base of our investor or our purchaser which or which we had not earlier thought of so a challenge the challenge for us is to look for new ways or new kind of customers who were earlier not investing in real estate and thus expand the market so that's not a job of only shapur ji banerji but even smaller investors because people will like to invest 10 lakhs and put in real estate so every, every stage there is an expansion manish uh, i would agree completely with you dipesh uh, i think the market is going to see uh, dimensions of investment in real estate which it never seen uh, and may i dare to say just like mutual funds happened to this industry later than the direct stocks what stops somebody after regulations come in place to invest 9000 rupees in real estate and buy a small little one square feet somewhere and thousands of people doing that so what is going to happen is the consumer profile is going to change from somebody who buys a flat to somebody who invests in real estate and that is not yet seen in a real proper way and that is going to change quite a lot with regulation coming in so all the ill effects of the small term that is that is that we can see right now will be more than compensated in the long or mid term with many new ways of investment of real estate coming in which i agree completely with you today so we've covered a lot on the developer side uh, parmal bhai i wanted to cover three other stakeholders very quickly before i open the floor for uh, questions um one is uh, if i can request you to cover is this imp- act going to impact the government at all the government uh, agencies it is going to and uh, those in this room feel that uh, they are affected or they are ambushed by this law you must understand that uh, though maharashtra was a progressive state in first of may 1960 that it was formed and 63 that mofa came into picture mofa is a short form of maharashtra ownership flat act it never applied to maharashtra uh, uh, housing board it said categorically that to housing boards it will not apply <laughs> it will not apply to government agencies they were sacred cow <laughs> and they were kept out and mofa was only to beat private developer private means even in a public sector if there is some private uh, investment is there whenever the government enter or semi government body was exempt. excluded they were exempt but rara for the first time daringly says that even if it's a government agency and if it is acting as a promoter they will also be covered by rara and this is going to put them on a high alert and you can't have inertia and you can't have ne- neglect the development otherwise you will face the same music which a private developer does so i believe government agencies are also on high alert they are also going to be affected they have also become promoters they have also find applications for registration with marera and they will be subjected to stand there with you when the complaints are filed and marera authority considers the cases for adjudication they will also be subjected to this law i want to cover the third stakeholder which is the brokers uh, in there and you know we've got uh, you know someone in the audience uh, vinod thakkar who heads the nar uh, i don't know whether we can pass on the mic because i don't think we're going to be as much capable as he's going to be uh, there uh, to say what is going to happen to that fraternity uh, with uh, with rera coming in uh, given that it is uh, applicable to brokers as well isn't it of so, course yeah. in in fact it's a, it's a radical change which has come about it has completely i would say that revolutionized this business and i believe that the uh, uh, black sheep are there in all professions and businesses and that's going to weed out people it's going to be license broker situation and you can't have one license person acting and i believe that we are going to be very soon at par with you uh, can europe in which that wow. you got uh, a, whenever you go you feel safe by dealing with people like vinod bhai that they are answerable they they got offices they got address they got numbers they are known by their face and they are not fly by night operator otherwise you are feeling unsafe can you ever think of or don't go by the recent headlines of noida but otherwise even in delhi if you want to buy an office there is no specific law which prevails it's a rule it's a law of jungle you are not feeling safe even buying in the heart of delhi a premises 
because there is no legal structure and there are so many advertisements that you are not able to find and for for your information when this law was formed the parliament wanted to know as to where are the where are the number of companies which have been registered maximum they said in the delhi there is 11000 to 16000 companies are registered there which is higher than bombay and in maharashtra which i believe is is mind boggling so i think uh, vinod bhai will throw more light on the subject but bringing real estate agents within the scope of rera is one of the most pioneer work which has been done by government of india and that's going to help the industry no wonder they made a film called as khosla ka ghosla <laughs> i think a lot I of people that, really... that 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 is reflection of what is happening pan india and uh, <laughs> that is going to change after rera no, i think uh, entire realtor broker fraternity is very happy that uh, we are part of rera and uh, nr india was the first 3 years back went to government and said that please include us in rera because there was no recognition to this fraternity and they are doing excellent job across the country there was no entry i mean there was no entry where somebody wants to become a broker just uh, print a card and you are a broker there is no qualification add on to that and it is very very important role for somebody if you are giving flat to somebody who is putting entire life's money this is one of the most three important decision for somebody and if you are part of it and if you are doing good i think it's a great uh, moment for all of us now we are getting recognized you know brokers are putting on facebook after registering that now i am a registered broker so that is a big change coming for the industry the confidence of consumer and the developers because nowadays developers are also coming out with fantastic projects so it is not only showing the plan and you know project as a consultant you need to study the entire projects what is coming in in terms of structure in terms of amenities who are the architects you know international architects coming in so to market and sell that product you really need that extra things which i am sure after being uh, regulated it will help lot of way and air india is bringing lot of education and uh, process for the brokers to take them to the next level only one thing which is really bothering all of us that you know in today's world you are sitting here in mumbai you do business across the country and the globe now we have to register in every state where we are doing business i think if we can have one license across the country for brokers that will really help the brokers to do business and it will help also developers to sell their product across the country thank you so just to add over here i think this is a i would say evolving journey for the brokers fraternity as well because up till now it was like looked upon as a transaction advisor kind of but now i think what people will look up to the brokers fraternity as a kind of a trusted advisor and even for the developer also it has to be a trusted broker so it's a long term relationship if you kind of cult cultivate i think that's going to pay off rather than the kind of transaction oriented approach so that's going to be a big change for the brokers community lastly is the stakeholder is the financial institution and uh, we know that namit i wanted to ask you is that uh, how would rera really impact the financial institutions if there is any impact so we know maybe you want to do it i think financial institution will have to rework their financial um, uh, economics purely because of the segregation of the money uh, and all financial institution in the past have been lending on the basis of the tangible security underlying security and the cash flows now today they have to work on the basis of the profitability of the project and what is left after year marking for land and construction cost so earlier because there was a provision based on i have a tangible security i have my uh, cash flow is escrowed to me and if tomorrow there is a problem it is developer's problem and he has to go and uh, take money from some other lender at a yes. higher cost yes. to pay me because he has personal guarantee and corporate guarantee and stake that is not going to help out so i think uh, belts have to be also tightened by all the financial institutions they have to go back and rework if there is no money left in the project and there are many cases which are actually floating around which are coming to very reputed developers today because people are saying my total receivable is 200 crore my construction cost is 300 crore and so there is a 100 crore deficit i don't want to be in this business can you take over my projects but who is going to take over a loss making project and that debt the debt lender there has to now rework and he has to go all the beneficiaries or the allottees take two third consent and ask for a change of developer but before that he has to agree to take a haircut so i think financial institutions who have been very aggressive lenders they have now 
their task cut out and they have to rework and tighten the belt and go back to the drawing board and decide how to be in business. Just to add to this, what happens also is, uh, like he rightly said, a lot of that will come back for restructuring. So those are assets that will come back first because the organized financial institutions will really want to churn the asset quickly, say that, okay, they'd be a seeing pain three months, six months, nine months down the road. Let's restructure quickly. Let's put this on the block before it becomes an NPA. Get another developer in who takes, there might be a haircut from everyone, or either equity or debt, partially, and you will have those projects rechristened out and then brought back into the marketplace. Because if that doesn't happen, then those projects will see a lot of pain. And with RERA, even the financial institutions will be partially responsible for having given debt to an asset for development. They should have done the due diligences. There are home loans being dispersed to customers. Why didn't you do the due diligence when you disperse the home loan? Because you should have seen the risk. Unfortunately, what RERA is doing is only giving you a certification. It doesn't certify and ratify everything that you've submitted there. It could be completely wrong. So the speculative nature of the business is dramatically going to change. Those who are not going to want to play with speculation will not start those projects. So you will see a dramatic supply drop, which is going to be advantages for those who are willing to complete their projects and move on. So all of these things will happen simultaneously. So we'll have to, it'll be interesting times for the next 12 years. So one word close uh, before we open it up for a, a couple of questions from the floor. Uh, we know that I'm going to start with you. One word close. Um, given whatever we've heard about RERA, about supply, about com consolidation, about the way the new uh, system is going to work, over the next 18 months, are the prices going to go up from where they are today? Are they going to come down? Or are they going to remain the same? One word close. Up, down, same. After 18 months, up. They will correct. Correct further. It will correct uh, in the next 18 months, but I think the, the jump or whatever the progression would be far higher after, I would say, uh, 36 months. The prices have nowhere to go except down because <laughs> I believe, <laughs> and let's not fool ourselves, in 18 months they cannot go up, though costs will go up, and it was one word, so I have to restrict myself to that. Bombay housing definitely up, other I cannot comment. I'm not an expert on that. Bombay housing, definitely up. Segmentation. Some will go up, some will go down. Uh, the more affordable the house, the better the chances. Great. I mean, uh, this is a great closure uh, from the, from the panelists. Uh, we were able to get a lot of, uh, lot of truth uh, come from the panelists, a lot of uh, candid views. Um, and you've, you've heard them speak. Uh, very happy to pick up a couple of questions. If you got any, please raise your hand. Um, identify yourself. We'll get a mic uh, to you. And if you've got any panelists in mind whom you want to specifically ask, please let us know. Greetings. Firstly, I'm obliged to hear from such phenomenal panel. I'm from Eros Group, Delhi. And my question is from you all. Like in this era of RERA and affordable housing both, the need of a buyer is going on a bit hi-fi side as far as the amenities are concerned. Moreover, Pan India, I would say that builders are refraining to launch any new project. Though our stats and studies say that definitely our industry will boom the market in upcoming years, but what about the upcoming couple of years? Like, will it be more painful for the buyers or the builders like us who have been in the market from past 70 years? So, Need your views on this. I, I, I think is that the last question that I asked really summed that view up. Uh, so, some of the, see, uh, as far as uh, Sir said that for Mumbai it will go up, but as far as the PAN is concerned, PAN India, new projects were in pipeline before the launch of VERA, but now they are on hold. So it's definitely affecting the industry. So that's the only question. For the couple of years, that's 18 months was specifically asked by you, sir. Okay, so, so you're saying beyond that, is it? Yeah, no, it means in 18 months, will it be more painful for the builders? That's the main question. So I, I, I thought the majority said yes. I think if you are very financially disciplined, it depends on the developer. 
if you are financially disciplined if your cost of fund is low if you are you have done your discipline has been intact in each of the project if your number of mistakes so there are so many variables to it that you can't sum up that answer actually if your mistakes are less than the you know the good steps taken by you or decisions taken by you in the past all that will decide your level of pain okay. i'll just add to it you know what uh, i'll just start from what he said you know what's happened in the past people have always looked at real estate as an investment product only now when you buy a home it's not only purely for investment but also for consumption the focus of marketing communication in the past by brokers or anybody was always ki acha investment hai achhi deal hai you have to go ye acha ghar hai you have to address the aspirations of consumer acha ghar could be as i said different brands will come for different um, uh, different positioning will come acha ghar kyon hai the good community here maybe it's good amenity here different positions on i think those kind of matured marketing communication will come up so people will buy home because they're buying a home there are people for that segment also and not only pure pure investor segment so that kind of segmentation will be required to come out of this 18 months period just last quick question uh, i know we've been we've run out of time please go uh, ahead yeah uh, my question to uh, each one of you is like uh, uh, because this regulation like if this regulation does not penalize the developer in a manner it should be uh, because for example recently the, the there is been substantial delay uh, in the registration but there is no substantial penalty so this would be a one more regulation just to comply for rather than just benefiting to the consumer or each of the stakeholder i i think is uh, <laughs> i i i feel as you know this is like a table and this developer is like a little worm you're taking a sledge hammer and you're hitting it hard and hard and hard until it dies what else do you want here the poor guy has been sort of <laughs> badgered uh, but you know parmal bhai maybe you can add i i thought it was no, very severe already i believe that a, a lot of order lot of i would say that uh, transparency lot of monitoring has been introduced by rera if we digest this much also according to me yes. this industry is My going to have a different different kind of a Uh, a, a, a new era a new dawn which is going to really rise in pine india and to my mind you must punish proportionately and it has been i, I believe for <laughs> centuries it is the experience of humanity that you can't overkill a person so at the same point this industry has to survive to take the punishment because it looks like that rera has come at a wrong time and therefore its effect has been extremely negative uh, if it had come prior to demonetization maybe it then, would then the life yeah. would have been different we would have appreciated it more it's a monsoon coming at a wrong time and a diwali coming in a wrong season so this particular law though it has got for everybody something and the builders have also they are unable to appreciate because they say that agar customer samne hota to main sab kuch kar deta aaj economy chal nahi rahi hai log aa nahi rahe hain aur rera karke main kya karunga that's where we are stuck so i think if overall economy starts moving then i believe rera we will take it into our stride then the, and the builder community is very innovative don't worry about it and you don't require him nee, to be i am not the questioning the regulation i am talking about the implementation of that regulation in in a, in a manner it has to be it depends i'll tell you that some states which will be uh, there will be lobbies working and the i believe Correct. that certain group of builders who deserve to be punished they'll probably buy their way through such things will happen have been happening all the time in 70 years of india's independence and that may happen but it can't happen for long it will have to change it will have to come and fall in line with rera and according to me rera is the way forward and it has to go forward with that only thing is that people who implement they have to be conscious that it has to be implemented in a reasonable matured manner and where you require the growth of the industry also to be taken into account just to give you one last line on this if you really want the strict implementation you might have between 70 and 80% of the projects that have got registered getting served a notice by rera to stop every activity till they have sorted out what they have presented and not for, not delivered so you will have no supply in the market because you can't sell without rera so they will have to be practical yeah. like sir said to make sure that they use the carrot and stick approach to ensure that the in institutional real estate drives itself to the transparency they want to derive out of the the act over a short term to a medium term period if they want to do it today you will stop everything just to add one thing when uh, the narrate cook conference was there and gautam chatterjee was very categorical 
He said that the Maharera, especially he talked about Maharera, the objective of the law is not to kind of penalize and stop as what uh, he said, to kind of stop the activity and that will create a kind of lot of panic situation. But the objective of this Rera or Maharera is to take this whole, I would say the proposition to a logical conclusion that the developers are able to deliver what they have, I would say, promised to deliver. And that's what I think Maharera is going to work towards it. And he has also promised that if he has to kind of reach out to the urban ministry or the housing ministry Correct. to kind yeah. of bring some changes, then he said that, that Maharera would be the first one to kind of support that proposition kind of. So penalty, forget, I think the regulators are not in a mood for penalty, but to make sure that the logical conclusion is achieved by this. Well, with this, we're going to close the panel. Thank you very much to the panelists and uh, thank you for a very patient uh, uh, audience. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. If I may please request our panel members to remain on the stage as well. And if I may please uh, once again invite Mr. Vijay Manod of Supreme Industries Limited to please come on stage to present a token of gratitude to all our panel members. I'm going to request you to also join our panel members for a group photograph as well.